Welcome back to another episode of Sound Pals Go to the Movies. Today I will be reviewing the movie The Iron Claw. So just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. The true story of the inseparable Von Erich brothers who made history in the intensive competitive world of professional wrestling in the early 1980s. So let's begin with my first pro. As someone who grew up watching wrestling, this brought me back to that time when I was sitting in front of the TV and watching big name wrestlers. With the names of the wrestlers that were named dropped in the film to when they showed Aaron Dean Eisenberg as Ric Flair and his famous woo catchphrase also the over-the-top outfits that he would wear as he entered the ring it just felt as if you were back as a kid laying down on the carpet watching it on the tv screen i just felt like leonardo dicaprio once upon a time in hollywood meme him pointing at tv that really felt nice next pro the costumes and how it made it feel like it was really back in that era nothing was skipped from the wrestling costumes to the normal clothing to the trucks and even to the interior of the wrestling ring even the hairstyles and the two fridges inside the von eric's house it all made sense and scream 80s this all added to that element that takes you into the film and says we got this you just enjoy this trip even if some people will laugh at Zach efron when he is wearing his jean shorts really short that is how it was back then i guess it's kind of nice that they actually paid attention to small details like that next pro Zach efron was amazing as kevin also the rest of the actors jeremy allen white harris dickinson stanley simmons they all played the roles of the van eric brothers so well a few years ago i saw a video of old wrestlers and their stories inside versus out outside the ring and in there there was a curse of the von eric brothers so yeah i went down the rabbit hole i saw the old videos the promotions and wrestling and yeah i gotta say the actors were spot on as much as possible but yeah Zach efron did bulk up to match the real kevin's body as all the other actors did and that really showed commitment to this film this made the film more interesting aside from the story it shows the dedication of the actors and how far they are willing to go to pull off such performances next pro the wrestling stunt coordinator was none other than chavo guerrero Jr., nephew of Eddie Guerrero, who comes from another famous wrestling family and also passed away in 2005. So the Guerrero family founder was born in Arizona, then moved, and his sons were born in Texas. And they go way back. They even had some inside the ring rivalry with the Von Erics back in those days. So having a descendant they came from that line of work that knows how to showcase the in ring move that made the real Von Erics famous. And I feel that Kevin Von Eric is really glad that someone who came from a wrestling family like he did was involved in this way in the film. And he he knows that what he did and choreographed was done professionally and out of respect for the industry and also the family. And also, by the way, Chavo played the role of the Sheik in the movie, just in case you didn't catch that. Next pro, the scene when Kevin arrives to the farm right before Kerry takes his life, then he blames his father, but then he stops and carries his brother's dead body inside and places him on the table while holding his hand. I was silent because it was impactful, but then they showed Kerry walking outside and having both of his feet and jumping. Then you realize he is in the afterlife then he gets in the boat and places a coin down and then off in the distance you see his brothers who are waiting for him i don't know but i felt that him placing the coin down was him paying the ferryman charon for crossing him over the river sticks into the afterlife but that's just me or i'm looking too much into it but what really choked me up was him hugging his brothers and then introducing himself to his older brother jack who was the first brother to die at age six and in the film he saw him as a small kid and then he just picks him up and carries him as they walk off but what did it for me was that it's not Carrie's point of view but I feel that it was Kevin's mind wanting this for his brother as he held his hand because I think that no one wants to think of their loved ones that just died as them completely being gone they want to feel as if they are in a better place and that is in whatever form of afterlife you believe in if it's heaven with clouds and angels or just the family farm with all your loved ones that died before you just waiting for you to get there and that is what I loved about this scene was Kevin is crying because Carrie is gone but also because he is now alone while his brothers are with Carrie and he just feels left out and doesn't know how to carry on. And now on to my cons. The biggest one I had is that they didn't elaborate on how Carrie Von Eric lost his leg. All it showed was him drinking a beer and then riding his motorcycle. As a viewer, we can put one and one together. But what I wanted to say is that there is more to the real story than just that. Yes, there was a motorcycle accident which caused his foot to be amputated. But after he got addicted to painkillers due to the pressure to keep wrestling and hit that he had lost his foot from everybody else around him. With his painkiller addiction, he got arrested multiple times with narcotic on himself, but then one time when he was caught, he was meant to go to jail, but his fame and his dad got the case thrown away, so there was no big news about it and people didn't catch a hold of it. Also, they never showed that Mike, the younger brother, was married before he died or that he was touring in Israel when he got his shoulder injury, but received the surgery once he was done with the tour. But due to the infection, he was left with some brain damage and that led to depression.
depression, memory loss, and felt that he was slowing his brothers back down. This made him take his own life by taking sleeping pills and alcohol, then leaving a goodbye note and then going off with a sleeping bag to die. This was actually shown in the film, but what I wanted them to show was him actually feeling depressed and losing control of himself to the point that he just wanted to take his life. The film does omit one brother, and that is Chris. He was the smallest of the Von Eric brothers. He suffered from a brittle bone condition, but he did try to step in the footsteps of his brothers and did climb into the ring a few times. But due to his bone condition, he did break and fracture some bones, and that made him depressed to the point that he took his own life as well with a gun. But in the film, it seems like they took him out and rode Mike with some elements of Chris, because when he hurts his shoulder, it makes it seem like he broke something. And also, Mike's body size in the film seems a bit smaller than what it really was in real life. Compared to his other brothers in real life, Chris had his growth stunned by medication he took for his asthma. So I felt that both were combined into one character that was shown in the film. But I feel that it would have been better if they would have all the brothers in the film since it's a tragic film that actually happened. And at the same time, this film, it's a celebration of the impact that they left in the wrestling industry. The last thing was that they didn't show the mother leaving the father, nor the father dying of lung cancer, or even how he held Kevin at gunpoint and making him feel bad for being the only one alive and not having killed himself yet of all his brothers. Something they omitted that I kind of read somewhere was that after the death of his brothers and father, Kevin was in such a bad state mentally that he stole a gun from a gun store to kill himself. But after rethinking it, he returned the gun to the store and apologized to the owner to which the owner recognized him and comforted him and said that everything was going to be fine, that he just needed some help. He then got the help and eventually got better. He is now happy living with his kids and grandkids. And like it says in the credits, Kevin accepted his family's induction into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2009, but I would have really liked it if they actually showed some clips of his speech or him speaking. So my grade for this movie is going to be a 7.5 out of 10. This film is not for everyone, especially if you don't like wrestling. I know some people will diss wrestling because they think it's fake and everything, but just like reality TV, everything is scripted. But it's basically how the actors in the ring sell the performances. It's about performing, it's about climbing the ranks, and the stunts are real. So real that there have been a lot of wrestlers who have lost their life inside and outside the ring. But the movie was great, the acting was there. The only issue to me was that there's some elements of the movie that's not in there. They've taken out characters or taken out parts of the story. If the movie was meant to portray everything and be transparent, leave everything inside the movie, let the fans judge it for what it was, don't try to restructure the story or remake the storyline. So that does it for this review of The Iron Claw. Please join us next time where we're going to review The Boys in the Boat. The Boys, that boat, sign. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.